Hello everyone, welcome to my review of the Alien Warrior maquette from Sideshow Collectibles. This is yet one of those very old pieces from Sideshow. Definitely in my book one of their greatest achievements. Um, I don't really know why that is. Um, there are just so many things about this piece that I really really like. Uh, I'm just going to do a 360 hit so you can, so you can get a glimpse of um, this piece from all angles. I don't really know what it is with this piece that just speaks to me. I'm not really the biggest Alien fan at all, um, but I remember watching Robot Online's review of this piece back in the day, actually several years ago, I think. And when I saw that review, I just knew that this is really, well, it really defines collecting statues when you have a piece like this, because this is just so incredibly iconic. And it just takes all the things that I like with statues and puts it into this single piece. Um, from a very cool design of a character that is very iconic and important and recognizable for, for most people. And just the, the overall look of it, the, the pose and the expression and, and just the, the way that this is done. It just really, really speaks to me at a very fundamental level, I guess. Um, so I've been looking to get this piece for, well, actually ever since I started collecting statues, I think, which is a few years ago now, uh, several years ago, actually. Um, but this piece just goes for such a high price today, and um, it's, it's quite difficult to find it, uh, to be quite honest. I was lucky uh, being able to find this piece from a local guy here in Denmark. And uh, when I saw this piece being offered, I just had to jump at it because um, it's a big piece. It's uh, it's hard to obtain, and and being able to find it from a local guy here in Denmark is just that's not something that's gonna happen that often. So I just decided that um, this is the chance I'm gonna I'm gonna really just go for it this time. Uh, this is my review of it, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you some nice pictures of it up close so you can see some of the details uh, of the design, the pose of course, um, uh, and of course also the paint application. Um, as this is one of Sideshow's older pieces, it represents an era of Sideshow's pieces that is probably not uh, the same as today in terms of well, the quality of it, I guess. Um, and that's not to say that the things that Sideshow make today are not of a good quality. I, I, be, I believe that many of their newer releases are also very, very nice. But this, this is just a reminder that Sideshow did really have a golden era, I would say. And, and this is one of those pieces that came out of it. Um, yeah. Right guys, I think I'm just going to go right ahead and uh, g get up closer to this piece. It's difficult to do one of those um, divided reviews that I usually do where I zoom in on the head and then the body and then the bottom and the base and all that. But I'm just going to try and give you a really good idea of what this piece looks like in all of its details. So I think that's best done by showing you some good pictures up close while I comment them. So let's just jump right into it guys. I hope you enjoy it. Let's see now. All right, guys, here we are slightly closer to the piece so you can see some of the details a bit better. Um, and I want, uh, what, what I want to highlight here is the pose actually, because this is definitely, in my opinion, one of the selling points in, of this piece, especially if you compare it to other alien statues out there. Um, this is just a very unique, and in my opinion, the most iconic version of this uh, creature in in the form of a statue um, and the pose I mean he's lurking here he's placed up high uh, looking down stalking his prey maybe or something like that and I find this just to really translate the essence of this character so incredibly well um, so this is just perfect in my opinion and you can see there are extremely many small details to this sculpt um, the, the suit is just a very unique design and I'm not totally familiar with the work of Geiger and how this is, if, whether this is screen accurate or, or something like that, but there are indeed a lot of small details and you have these very bizarre looking tubes and stuff 
uh, running around all over this character, this creature here, and and it just looks so well. It's just so captivating because you you notice these very small things and and all these small tubes and all these fine details in the sculpt. They just come together and create this very convincing and authentic looking piece here. And again, the pose, I just find it to be perfect. I couldn't imagine a better pose for, for this creature here because it just looks so creepy and intimidating and it just, it really captures the essence of the movies as well. So um, I find this piece to be extremely iconic and as I'm not the biggest alien fan or anything like that, but I know that they are a big part of pop culture and, and and when I see this piece I just know that well even though I'm not the biggest fan of the movies I'm, I'm not too familiar with the, the whole alien universe or anything like that but still this just talks to me uh, to my inner statue collector it just it has some of those important aspects that I really value in a statue so it's always been cl quite clear to me that this is something that I really want in my collection um, I think I'm gonna try and zoom in even more now so you can see the paint application and all that. So just give me two seconds. Right, um, I think this is the best I can do other than of course adding a few still photos also. Um, but as you can see, hopefully, you have this variation in the texture of um, mostly a, a greenish color um, and a black one. And he's almost actually tiger striped. Um, at least in some areas, um, the green and the black play with each other. Um, and I think they've been airbrushed on or something like that. It's it's nicely and very naturally that these colors um, overlap. Um, and in some places, particularly in places that they have sought to highlight, you have a more yellowish color going on as well. Um, and also on the back here you can see there are areas where they have um, applied the black paint as if it's some kind of um, speck or something where they've maybe used a toothbrush or something similar to apply the paint in a, a natural random way um, with small specks on top of the stripes that you have on the arms in particular and also all, all the flatter uh, larger areas of the of the sculpt um, but it, it's very creepy looking and it's very organic looking also and of course you have a color scheme that fits the artwork of Geiger, at least the artwork that I'm loosely familiar with. So it looks very nice, uh, organic and creepy. And um, on all areas you have a very shiny effect, um, as if this is a, as if he's actually wet, uh, kind of. Um, and that's also just adding to the organic feel of this piece and it, it just makes it a bit more disgusting somehow. Uh, and creepy. Uh, definitely not someone you'd walk up to and, and touch uh, because you'd probably think that it's disgusting. So um, yeah, it looks really nice. Um, I think I'm gonna show you the tail because uh, the tail is definitely one of the most important things also. Uh, so let me just set up the camera so you can really see it. Just one second. All right, let's start from the back side here. The tail is actually attached all the way up here. I don't know if you can see it though. Um, there's a small seam line, but you hardly notice it. And um, it's just very nicely detailed and you have the same paint scheme going on. And what I love about the tail is that it surrounds the base like this. Um, it really just makes this pose pop even more. I mean the base itself is amazing and you have this tail just really topping it off amazingly I think. You have the same tiger stripe uh, theme going on on the very tip of the tail and the colors that make up for the tail well it's the same but you have also some brown specks and some yellow specks um, in various places and it's just they they really did the extra thing to make this thing unique in its uh, look. So it's not just simple color, you have these small brown specks going on in various places. It's not really, um, it's just very unique. I'm sure that if you have two of these pieces and hold them up together, you'll see a very unique paint application going on on, 
on each piece because it it just feels like they've taken time to do the paint application very very carefully and manually when it comes to this piece. I love the base by the way. You have the Wayland Yutani Corp logo here. It doesn't really make sense that it's there, but it's just it again they they are sacrificing a bit of logic in order to just make this very iconic piece instead that that has these themes of a space station, a very industrial looking base here. Um and it just captures the the essence of the movie really not just the character but also the movie and i find that in incredibly important when it comes to pieces that like this that represents the whole franchise um it's just not a random boring flaw or a, a, an, an air vent or something like that no this is just this is made for the occasion but it's still very iconic um and this is just a way of thinking that I really like when it comes to designing a piece like this. Seriously, this is just amazing. And of course they sacrifice a bit of logic by adding a logo here. But why not? I mean, then then you have these small details that you, you look at it, you recognize it, and you think, yeah, sure, of course, this is um, this makes sense in some strange way. You can recognize things, and that's important. Especially if you want one single piece to be very iconic. It's nice that you have these small details. Uh, the finish of the base, you have the same color scheme. As I said, it's indus industrial in the sculpt. You have small details of uh, something, pieces of a space station or uh, whatever it might be. And you have these metallic looking surfaces, shiny looking. And uh, they are not evenly applied. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure they're just trying to achieve some kind of realistic look to the surface here, where you have variations in the texture. And it looks really nice. And you have a rusty feel to all the silver, uh, the, the iron steel spots here. You have some rust going on, actually. And, yeah, again, the details are just... It's amazing, I think. So, paint application, definitely th something that Sideshow did very well here. Actually, I don't really know what else needs to be said here because, well, I don't know, but I really feel that this piece kind of speaks for itself. Um, I might be on my own here, but to me this is just re a very iconic piece and I, I just don't see any of the alien pieces coming anywhere close to this one. Even not the big chap um, statue, which is also very cool, it's very big, but um, I just find the pose to be suffering a bit on that one. Uh, whereas on this one the pose is just perfect. You don't have the on the alien warrior. You don't have the same um, translucent head uh, here. Uh, the elongated skull where you have a translucent thing going on like on the big chap. Instead you have this more ripped version here that is just uh, a plain sculpt, uh, not being translucent or anything like that. Um, but this version of alien is just equally as iconic, I think. Um, and for that reason, this is just this is just the alien piece that I need in my collection. Um, I don't need anything else than this. This is just this is just the most iconic piece to me, especially in terms of the pose and just the overall expression of this piece. As I said, the pose is main main selling point for me. The paint application very satisfying, uh, done very well. Um, you have to be aware though. This is one of the pieces that you'll ev eventually run into on eBay uh, looking a bit off. And that's because this is actually one of the pieces that has been knocked off quite a few times um, by recasters. And you have to be very aware of that when looking for this piece. Um, try and look up, use this video or use other folks' videos and pictures to determine if it looks uh, authentic or not. Usually you can see that the paint application is very different on the recasts. Uh, from what I've seen, it's more of a... The tiger stripes definitely are more defined uh, and have a different color variation. You have a more maybe reddish-orange thing going on there, maybe brown. Uh, but this is a green-looking statue, so you, you definitely need to be aware of that. Uh, so use pictures on the internet and be very cautious. If the price is too good to be true, then I bet it is not true. So um, 
you just have to be cautious because I'm I'm quite certain that a lot of people unfortunately have bought this piece on eBay uh, to discover though that it was actually just a recast and um, yeah I'm I'm personally personally I'm a very big opponent to recasts I don't think it's okay um, sure if you don't have the money to it it's it's unfortunate because this is a very pricey piece so if you want to get a recast. I, I can understand that you, you would buy a recast because it's cheaper, but there are just so many negative things about the recasting industry. And you usually forget that when you're just browsing, but there are just so many things that play in when it comes to recast. And, and that's why I'm against it. I'm not, I'm not going to make this video into a, a big... Um, discussion about recast but I'm just say, saying that uh, you have to be careful um, if you want to get the real thing then you're probably going to have to pay a real price for it. Um, I'm going to end off by showing you how this piece looks inside uh, my Besta display so give me two seconds so I can set that up. Right guys and as you can see he fits quite nicely inside a Besta. The only thing I needed to adjust was the height of the shelf. I had to move it down one notch because he does measure 23 and a half inch around that. So it's a quite tall piece actually. But he fits quite nicely in and also if you look from the side here you can see he won't stick out from the shelf or anything. You can close the door if you have a, clo have a door attached to your Besta. Uh, with that said, guys, I'm going to conclude this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them. And do remember to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care.